Hello. Thank you, Ella. Thank you. Good morning. Hope you're all well. So I'm a translator. As Ola talked, I am an engineer as well, so I apologise for being a bit of a geek. Um, but what I do is I help to translate what technology does to what every person would really understand it. And that's really where the benefits are in technology. A lot of the times become too complicated and people just don't understand where the benefits are going to be. In this short presentation, I'm going to talk through some of the challenges I think that we have, and I think it came out in the fashion fusion discussion of talking technical people talking to non-technical people. That can create a lot of challenges and just look at some of the things we should be aware of going forward. But also to look at some of the technology that has managed to bridge that gap, that has managed to help to bring the masses along and to really understand the benefit that technology can bring. And also how that can appeal to the wearable space as well. How you can leverage that to hopefully improve and expand the impact of your wearable products. One of the things, yeah, I do know people who do wear socks and sandals like this. So what, one of the challenges we see here, it's a very simple concept, but you can get two very different outcomes. And this can often be the challenge, is you're looking for a very simple solution or a simple functionality, and by coming up from two different perspectives, can come up with very, very different outcomes. Engineers love to solve problems. That's most of the reason why engineers want to be here. They want to solve problems. And sometimes they try to solve problems that maybe necessarily don't need to be solved. Here's a few examples of areas where maybe miss the point a little bit. The first dress is actually a cocktail dress that actually makes you a cocktail if you play a game. Interesting concept, entertaining, but I'm not really sure if the mass market is quite, is quite ready for it. The middle product it has got a very good reason for doing it. It is a, a cycle helmet that's built into your jacket. It's very good, but I think aesthetically, again, for, for most people, it's not right hitting the point. And the last one is a keyboard built into your trousers, and I'm still trying to work out why you would want to have that. But it's, it's there. So what you can see is that the mindset is wanting to solve these problems. So, so how do we try and get the right problems solved so people can really start to get the benefits out of technology and avoid it from seeming like a gimmick? You want to really get that, that benefit going forward. So one of the things we're going to look at is something that's very close to my heart is um, the smart mobile space. Smart mobile phones have broken a lot of the barriers down for you. It's one of the most successful technology products ever. It has got some of the biggest, widest adoption globally. It doesn't matter price, background, all these things. It has a, a universal appeal. So we're going to look at what has made that universal appeal work and how can you use some of those concepts when you're bringing your fashion tech out to market to really help people to understand the benefit of the technology without it seeing as being superfluous. Personalization is absolutely key to smartphones. That's been one of the key success factors. If I was to look around the room and look at everyone's different smartphone, they would all look different. Even if it's the same brand, you would have different backdrops, different ringtones, different apps. It is your phone. It's not someone else's, it's your phone. So it's really personalization is very, very strong in really getting that adoption. And I think that's been one of the challenges for wearables to date, is there's been a little bit of one size fits all. You know, maybe you can change the, the band, but there's not been a huge amount of choices. And there's not been a huge amount of choices of the range of wearables that you can get. So how do we bring some of the technology that's been in smartphones and the adoption to help wearables and their uptake? So we're going to have a look at the, the five senses. It doesn't get much more personal than the five senses. So it's looking at some of these things smartphone has done quite well. Some of them are still untapped, and some of them are still not quite there. Sight, one of the first things you do is when you have a phone, when it's turned on, not terribly exciting. You turn it on, and that's where your emotional interaction is going to come with your technology. So sight's incredibly important when you're looking at bringing technology and people's adoptions of it. Almost every single smartphone has a thing called a graphics processor. And a graphics processor is really what brings these products alive. It makes them easy to use, it brings the colors, it allows you to put filters 
on photographs. And, and some technology like that is something that you could really leverage going into other products with that user interface. The barriers are already down. People are already starting to understand how to use that. The range of screens available to you is much wider, bendable, small, large, whatever. So you've got a lot more choice. But the graphics processor behind it will really help you. Hearing, again, one of the key things has been playing music and all these elements. But what we're starting to see is the earbuds starting to become a little bit more intelligent and offer you some more things. We've seen a lot about visible technology in fashion, but I think it's very important to also look at the invisible technology. It's where there's a lot of value for the general public who will really want the features but don't necessarily want to shout about all of them all the time. So here you're, you're getting earbuds that are now giving you sensors or they're giving you directions. You know, if you, you link it up to your phone, if you're walking along the street and your sat-nav wants you to go left, it's your left earbud that vibrates. So it means you can get a choice of whether you want your technology to be visible or not. Touch, where we're seeing a lot with, with screens, people like the feedback, they like this product to feel real to them. And um, what we're starting to see is those vibration sensors coming into to clothing as well. There was a product at CES this year was about jeans. And again, they were linking it to navigation, that your left pocket vibrated if you'd go left, right pocket. So again, these things are starting to take this technology that was originally started in the mobile phone space and putting them into, into clothing. The last two are the most difficult ones, and they're the ones that really haven't been explored fully yet. So with technology, we've come a long way, it's progressing very fast, but there's still a long way to go. Smell, there's opportunities for you to tap into the smell sense by either linking it to a heart rate monitor, and if your heart rate goes up, you, you release a more calming scent. Taste is really difficult. It's one of the most difficult ones, but once these two elements have been brought into a technology that's easily um, adoptable, there's another point of differentiation. It's an opportunity there. You can actually get chopsticks that will tell you if your food is off or not. So it's getting there, but it's not quite there as yet. So when we, we look at translating technology, some of the key things. We need to make technology relevant, otherwise it will feel like a gimmick and people won't see it as a benefit for, for buying. You want to actually solve the problems that people actually want solved, rather than some, some random opportunities. It can be very valuable having invisible technology as well as visible technology. So don't overlook some of those technology opportunities whereby building it in without it being too obvious can also bring a great deal of benefit but you still need to market it, so that's one of the challenges. And focus, and this is probably more for the technical guys in the room, focus more on what the technology enables rather than how it's done. As engineers, we love to shout about how this is done and how complex this is. Most people don't care. They just want to know what it's going to enable, so that's a really key one. And, and reuse, don't be frightened to reuse some of the concepts that people are already quite comfortable with and adapt them into your marketing and your messaging so that people feel the relevance and can understand why it's applicable to them. So I hope that's useful. If you have any other com questions, I'm going to be here all day. If you've got any other specific tech questions you think, don't understand what that is, come and give me a shout. Um, and that's me. Thank you.